Hello and welcome to a very special segment of The Store TV from a very busy and hectic Mumbai, India. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Perhaps you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and also Shopperstop. Yeah. Uh, well, let me start with Shopperstop first. And uh, Shopperstop is really one of the what one of India's largest department store, what we call big box retailer. We are close to about 1.9 million in terms of square footage area, about 28 stores across about 11 cities, and fast expanding. And we really, if I was to just try to talk about us in one line, we are a bridge to luxury retailer. So we are. Uh, we used to be a premium retailer, and we are trying to go upwards uh, towards luxury. So in a sense, we are trying to straddle the bridge to luxury space. And in terms of myself, uh, uh, basically, I am a sales and marketing professional. Uh, you know, who's uh, done my MBA out of India and uh, worked for various companies uh, like Asian Paints, Marico, uh, Future Group, and now Shopperstop. Tell us a little bit about the, um, I suppose, the journey that Shopper Stop has been on, um, and indeed, I think uh, a lot of other um, Indian retailers over the course of the last uh, few years. It's been a, um, a fast development uh, for many retailers, um, and I'm um, sure there are a lot of uh, lessons along the way. Yeah, I, I'd say that I think uh, most Indian retailers, and you know, to an extent, the slowdown has been uh, pretty good in the sense of making us realize who we are and what we actually do. So getting back to basics, and I think Shoppers has really always been a premium store. Right from the time we started, we were, uh, you know, what we like to call a house of brands. So we're really not a very private label oriented. Private labels is just about a fifth of our turnover. And, uh, you know, when other stores might have 70% private label, we just have about 20%. But uh, I think uh, the slowdown uh, and I think our evolution has given us the chance to really sharpen our premium positioning, wherein not just are we any longer premium, but we are trying to push the boundaries of premium because there are others who have caught up with us on premiumness. So through a variety of uh, uh, initiatives in the area of merchandise, in the area of service, in the area of customer connect, we are going higher on the price uh, and you know, while it may, may sound contrary to slow down when everybody wants to go value, uh, we are really going the other direction. Yes, I mean, it, does, I think it does. If you look at all the uh, um, the weight of uh, um, both expenditure and uh, innovation uh, in more developed markets, it's pretty much going in the value side of the uh, uh, equation. Absolutely. I believe we are uh, still early days for retail in India. It's what, about a couple of decades old. Uh, now, we started off in 91 ourselves and uh, it's uh, probably childhood phase for retail and I think people are still, uh, you know, uh, getting their feet wet across various formats. But the way we see our DNA and what we do really well, and this is different from probably some of the other retail groups that operate in India, we do uh, great quality merchandise, we do great quality customer experience. I think these are the two key things on which we hinge our uh, strategy. So we are not uh, looking to go down the value path and we, we really believe there are people who can do that much better than we can. But there are some things we do really well. And even uh, not only in the department store uh, format, but you know, uh, hypermarket format where you know typically hypermarkets are all about price, price, discount, right? Uh, we created Hypercity, which is another part of our group, created Hypercity. And that's a hypermarket with a clear difference. And the clear difference being that it's a hypermarket with a very lifestyle kind of an ambience and uh, uh, superb merchandise and great customer service. So I think as a group, our DNA is really around uh, great merchandise and great service. And I think this is really our focus. And I think we've learned this very well from the way we've evolved since 91. So um, looking at uh, the way you think that the market is going to develop and also the consumer is going to develop, what do you think are the key drivers and the key trends for uh, Indian retailing going forward? I'd say uh, yeah, Indian retailing, David, might be too broad a span. I will, let, let's say if, if I talk about the premium retailing side of India, you know, which is one sub subsect, a large subsect uh, by itself, I think uh, three things will be the key drivers and this is no rocket science, this is back to I'm sure when I wasn't in the company, but when uh, B.S. Nage started this business in 91, he probably thought of these three things. It was all always about great merchandise. So really, uh, you know, 
top of line stuff, not just international brands, but for example, some of the stuff we've done in India recently. Uh, we have a brand called Vodafone, which is a telecom operator. They created a advertising communication using Zuzus. Mm -hmm. These are uh, fancy characters. We actually created merchandise based on that. Super hit. So I think just getting the right merchandise, be it international, be it Indian, be it whatever. To the, I think great merchandise is one. I think great customer service, where you go to any lengths to uh, keep your customer happy. And you know more so when you have 75% of your business coming from loyalty uh, customers. I think great service is really the second part. And thirdly, I'd say customer connect in terms of uh, uh, relevant communication, uh, meaningful communication, targeted communication, and really creating communication which is in sync with his or her aspirations. I think these are really the simple three and uh, you know, uh, I'm sure these were talked about in '91 when we started the company. Just uh, zeroing in on just one of those um, in terms of communications, what are you finding are the most effective and efficient ways uh, of communicating with your customers at the moment? Uh, it's a mixed bag, David. And uh, you know, let, let me start with first dif differentiating between mass marketing, which is press, TV, radio, etc., vis-a-vis direct marketing. And uh, you know we, we are seeing uh, there, there are clear reasons for using direct marketing because you are seeing a whole lot of de, you know uh, uh, let's say targeted communication because you, you know you know one side does does not fit all and I think that is one big area of uh, expansion for us within direct marketing I think the whole emergence of the digital uh, form of communication be it the social media kind of communication or even be it the paid for web uh, you know related mm -hmm. uh, communication and uh, more so since we are talking really to the top end of India and I, you know I would hazard a guess to say that 99% uh, of my customers would be internet enabled and would be browsing the web in some form so I think these two areas are really two uh, you know while we will, we will continue to do mass marketing in its own way because you end up reaching so many more people but I think uh, we are biasing towards both digital and direct marketing as a clear area of, uh, uh, you know, futuristic communication. And, and with this uh, more upscale consumer, are they using um, the social media networks in a big way? Absolutely. So we have our own fan page, for example, on Facebook, and we are active on Twitter and many of the other uh, sites. And you, you said it rightly that uh, this customer, the upscale customer, is actively involved in, and you know, it's, it's not a, it's not a evolution which has taken six years or seven years. I think this has just hit us in the last year or two, where uh, you know, from being very small part of our plan, it's becoming more and more. In fact, there are events which we conduct uh, nowadays purely from a social media. Uh, perspective. So I think particularly for the upscale audience it is catching on and uh, as we speak I'm sure the numbers are growing. I think many um, more established companies struggle a lot with social media um, mainly due to the fact that uh, there's a certain amount of control in a sense you have to give up. Um, are you finding that uh, that uh, that's something that is uh, exercising the minds within the company or is it something that uh, is second nature to you now? Yeah, I think uh, somewhere in the middle is what I would say. I think it's great. I think uh, there is yeah, a sense of loss of control vis-a-vis I mean, releasing a press ad which you have completely within your scheme of things and you know moving to social media which is a very differentiated, uh, very unique form of uh, communication and uh, messaging. I think we are, we are evolving on that uh, path. And uh, but truly, it's not a subject we understand best ourselves. We really look at best of class partners who come and help us with taking this uh, further. We have some amount of understanding of the subject, but I think it's really getting the right people on board, you know, and giving them a clear brief, giving them clear boundary conditions, so to speak, and really, uh, uh, you know, using their uh, competence and skill to get around in this space. Great. Well, thank you very much indeed uh, for spending the time to talk to us. Um, I think uh, maybe a m lot of our uh, listeners would uh, like to uh, sign up maybe to your Twitter site or your Facebook page. Mm, absolutely. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you very much indeed. Absolutely. And thank Thanks. you, David. Thank you.